Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about tire slip angles. A tire slip angle is one of the fundamental ways that a tire generates forces and moments, so it's important for vehicle dynamics. If you haven't already seen my video on the tire axis system, because this is where the uh, slip angle will be resolved. And here's just a general overview of the tire axis system. We're looking at a top-down view of a tire that's rolling forward this way, and we have the x-axis pointing straight out the tire, and then we have the y-axis pointing out the right side of the tire. There's a bunch of resources out there that talk about tire slip angle, and sometimes they'll draw an entire car and then they'll put down four tires and they're looking at slip angles of each tire. But if you really want to understand the tire slip angle, focus on a single tire, that's all you need. There's two ways of looking at tire slip angle. The first is the mathematical equation of the slip angle, and this will be useful in my future videos on vehicle dynamics, oversteer, understeer, neutral steer, all those kinds of things. The second is the intuitive physical description of the slip angle, which is where we can look at what is actually happening to rubber in the footprint as we uh, turn our tire while we're moving in a certain direction. If you want to skip to either one of these two sections, I'll put the times up on the screen here. Here. It's important to also note that tire slip angles can be produced uh, in different ways. So the first way, imagine that you're driving uh, in a straight road and then you turn the wheel because you want to turn the car and that produces a slip angle. So that input from you has produced a slip angle. But in another way, if you're driving on a straight road and a gust of wind comes from the side and blows you sideways, now the wind has produced a slip angle with no input from you. So let's start with the mathematical method. The slip angle in words is defined as the angle between where the tire is headed and where it is pointed. So we should be able to find the angle between the velocity velocity vector of the tire and the x-axis of the tire axis system. So down here I plotted the top view of the tire again in black. The axis system is plotted in dashed black lines with the x-axis pointing straight out of the tire and the y-axis pointing right out of the tire. And the tire is moving in the direction of the velocity vector v like this. From the definition I just mentioned up here in words, we should be able to draw the slip angle between the velocity vector and the x-axis of the tire axis. And that's what this angle is and we denote the slip angle with alpha. So how do we get the formula for the slip angle? Well we can break up the velocity vector into components. So I drop a perpendicular here and we get u, which is the component of the velocity in the x direction. Drop a perpendicular here and we get v, which is the component of the velocity in the y direction. And I can take this triangle here, this guy, and I'm just going to kind of rotate it over to here. So this side is just u, and then this side here, that's v, and we have the slip angle alpha. And so we can say that the tangent of alpha is equal to the opposite over adjacent, opposite over adjacent, so we get v over u. And if we uh, rearrange the terms, we get that the slip angle is equal to the inverse tangent of v over u. So that's it. That's the mathematical definition of the slip angle, just shown in this equation here. But the next question then is, how do we know what sign the slip angle is, if it's positive or negative for a right-hand turn or for a left-hand turn. We can take a look at what the signs are for v and u, and then what the sign is of uh, the inverse tangent for a certain argument here. So let's come back over to our tire diagram over here. We're assuming that the tire is always rolling forward, so if it's always rolling forward, then the velocity vector will be anywhere from here to here, and you can see that it, you will always get a positive u component of the velocity in the x direction, which means that u in this equation will always be positive. However, for right-hand turns or left-hand turns, the v velocity magnitude changes, and so in this case, we're moving this way, but the tire's turned this way. It's trying to turn right. This is a right-hand turn, and a right-hand turn, you can see, produces a negative v, so it's in the opposite direction of the positive y-axis, which means that for a right-hand turn, we have a negative v. Conversely, if we have a left-hand turn, if we're going this way and we turn the tire this way, the v will be over here, and we'll end up getting a positive v. So we can plug the positive or negative v positive u and see what the inverse tangent function does. So for the right hand turn we have v over u is a negative and if we plug a negative into the inverse tangent here and we look at this plot, if we plug a negative in we're on this side which gives us an invert inverse tangent that's also negative so for a right hand turn slip angle is negative. Conversely if we plug in the left hand turn positive into here positive theta. The inverse tangent of a positive theta is also positive, which gives us a positive slip angle for a left-hand turn. If you haven't watched my tire axis system video, I just want to note that these are defined based off of the SAE tire axis system. I'm going to show you this physical description with a demonstration I like to call foot on a treadmill. There's other explanations out there, but this seemed like a good one to call my own and to supplement the other explanations. So imagine that my foot, my right foot here, is a tread element on a tire, and that me going like this signifies the tire rolling. So the the tread element, my foot, moves in a circle. I can't afford a treadmill and I don't go to the gym, so you're going to have to imagine that I have a treadmill underneath me. So imagine first that we have a forward rolling tire, that is that the treadmill is just going in this parallel to the direction that my foot is moving like this. The treadmill is moving parallel to the wheel plane, and as the tread element comes around, it makes contact with the ground, stays in contact with the ground as the tire keeps rolling, and then leaves the ground at some point behind the center of the footprint. Now let's move to the case where we have some finite slip angle. Imagine the treadmill is moving in this direction now. So instead of coming from here, 
It's coming from this direction. And this, you might recall, signifies a right-hand turn. So if the road's coming at me from this direction, this is me going straight, and I turn, that means I'm trying to turn right. So let's see what happens to this tread element, my foot, as it makes contact with the road. So right when this tread element, my foot, makes contact with the road, it's still at the center plane. It's not displaced side to side yet, so there's no forces generated. However, as the tire keeps rolling, because the tread element is in contact with the road surface, it will move in the direction of the road surface, as you can see here. And this means that as we move farther back in the overall tire footprint, the tread element will be displaced further and further from the center plane. And the farther it's displaced, the more lateral force it generates. So you can think of it like a spring is connecting my displaced leg, so a spring between here and the center plane of the tire. You can think of it like the spring is connecting my displaced leg to my leg that's still at the center plane. The farther displaced it is, the larger the force. And at some point near the rear of the footprint, the tread can no longer follow the path of the road, and it slides back to its neutral center line position as it lifts off the road. And then we do the whole thing over again. Tread element comes in, follows the path of the direction that the tire is moving, brings it back out like this, and then at some point it can't sustain that displacement, pulls back here, and then we lift off again. So just to review, when we have a no slip angle, the tread element enters the contact patch, there's no slip angle, so it just goes straight back like this, then lifts off at the back of the print, comes around, does it again. For the case where we do have a slip angle, tread element comes down, hits the road surface, gets displaced as it moves rearward in the, in the contact patch until it can no longer sustain that displacement, comes back here, lifts off the road. And it's this displacement here that's generating the lateral force due to the slip angle. So that's one of the ways that you can visualize physically what the tire slip angle is. Is it a perfect analogy? No, but it can help understanding. If you like this video and you want to see more, please subscribe. And if you didn't like the video, please let me know what I can do better. Thanks for watching.